Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 2nd, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Centrelink got a neat little article about the Alina point of sales malware, as they call it, and it does focus on behavior that I've seen before in this type of malware, but I think it's often overlooked, and that's the exfiltration of credit card data via DNS queries. Credit card data is kind of made for being exfiltrated via DNS. All you have to do is take the track data, create a host name, and then look up that host name. And of course, using a domain that the attacker owns. So the attacker will be able to log this DNS query. In my opinion, there are kind of three different things that you can do to detect behavior like this. First of all, just the sheer volume of DNS queries may give this away. Also the length of the DNS query, and then Probably the most important part here, look for the top 10 by frequency domains that were looked up a particular day that were not looked up at all for the last 30 days. That report usually tends to be hugely productive when it comes to find various DNS based command and control channels. And then we got a Couple of updates for the Mac OS uh, malware that I talked about yesterday. Called it yesterday a ransomware because it does display a ransom node, but further analysis uh, done by Bleeping Computer as well as uh, by Patrick Wardle from Objective C suggests uh, that, well, it's probably really more a wiper in the sense that uh, you are unlikely going to get your data back. Part of the reason that they're believing this is that the Bitcoin address for the ransom is static. There is no other way to contact the author. So uh, as they suggest here that they would decrypt your files once you pay, well, they don't really know who paid. So unlikely that you'll get your files back. On the other hand, the malware also exfiltrates files. So it's not just encrypting them. But the fundamental lesson that I mentioned yesterday that it's probably a bad idea to just install software that usually costs money from a source that claims to have it for free. Well, uh, that still remains. Also got some good feedback on Twitter. A uh, listener stated that or one question I asked yesterday is why does it wait three hours to actually do its evil thing? And one suggestion on Twitter here was that, well, uh, probably the attacker doesn't want you to link the fact of installing that software to the ransomware. Also, Patrick Wardle on his website has a couple of interesting tools that are free that you can install that will essentially warn you if you do have software that all of a sudden starts encrypting a large number of files. And IBM, together with the Ponymon Institute, came up with a nice report that I haven't read because it's behind the paywall, but I like the conclusion so much that I figured I'll mention it anyway without reading all the details. Now, this cyber resilience report states that more than 30% of organizations that they surveyed have more than 50 tools in use that they use to detect or to provide security, but that actually the more tools companies are using, the less they're able to actually prevent and detect attacks. And well, that's it for today. It's also it for the week due to the July 4th weekend. There will be no Friday podcast. So enjoy the weekend and don't get yourself into too much trouble with fireworks. That's it and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.